This video will go over how to pair your classes with Canvas and McGraw-Hill, create and sync assignments within Canvas, view and edit those assignments within Canvas, and finally, how to deep link to McGraw-Hill assets and resources in Canvas. Please note that this video only applies to teachers in SSO and auto rostering districts. If you are unsure which access service applies to your district, please read the Access Services description article to learn more. Additionally, if you don't see the McGraw-Hill tool described in this video, please check with your district IT to make sure that Assignment Sync and Grade Passback has been implemented for your district. The first step in utilizing the McGraw-Hill Assignment Sync and Grade Passback integration with Canvas is going to be to pair your classes. To do that, we'll first go into your Canvas course. Uh, for this example, I'll be using this Reveal Math course. By default, you should land on your modules page. And once this integration has been configured by your district, you will be able to launch our Assignment Sync and Grade Passback tool through this three dot menu at the top here. Uh, alternatively, you can also launch the tool from any of your modules using that same three dot menu. The name of the tool should be McGraw-Hill LTI Link Grades and Assignment Integration. Once we launch that tool, it will show, it will display to us the classes that you have in Canvas. Uh, for my Reveal Math Canvas course, I currently have two sections, which I have section one and section two. Rather your district uses cross-listing or otherwise has multiple classes rostered for you, uh, this integration will function the same. So rather you have five classes here or even just one, uh, you will follow the same steps. Uh, before we can continue, we do need to pair all of the classes in this list here. Like I said, for us, it's just going to be these two. Uh, to do that, we will click this pair button. And once we click that, the tool will automatically display for you all of the classes that you currently have in the McGraw-Hill platform. Keep in mind, your district should automatically roster these for you, so these classes should appear for you automatically. We have a large list of classes here. By default, our system will look for similar names and recommend a class for you to pair. However, do double check that this is the correct class as if you pair these classes incorrectly, this will cause issues for both you and your students. In this case, this recommended class is the correct one, so I will select this. I will also pair my second class. And once again, in my example, the recommended class is the correct one. But once again, be sure that you are double checking to ensure that you're pairing correctly. Once we have paired all of our classes, we will need to save pairings. One thing to keep in mind in the next step, we will need to create a primary section, but this button will remain grayed out until you have paired all of your sections below. We'll go ahead and save these. And since we have paired all classes, we do have this create primary section button. Uh, for myself, I already have one, so I'm just going to relink those real quick. Please note that if at any time you need to de-crosslist your classes in Canvas or otherwise delete any of your classes within Canvas, it is very important that you first unpair them through our tool before doing so. If you do not unpair the classes before deleting them or de-crosslisting them, this will actually break the link on our side and you will not be able to pair those classes later. Uh, if you do this, you will need to contact our custom support teams in order to unpair the class for you on our backend systems. Once you've clicked that Create Primary Section button, an empty class will be automatically created on the McGraw-Hill platform, and I will explain to you how that functions in just a moment. Once you've created that primary section, you will now have a Launch Primary Section button. And now that we've paired our classes, we can go over how to create assignments. Since we have multiple sections here, we have a couple of different options. We can create assignments through our primary section, and this allows us to automatically share all of the assignments 
in that primary section to all of these secondary sections. For example, if we had five classes here, we could create an assignment through this primary section, and that assignment would automatically be assigned to all of our students in all five of these classes. Alternatively, you can launch the individual sections and create assignments for each individual class as needed as well. We will go through the primary section in this example. Once you click to launch the primary section or any of the individual sections, it will launch into our tool where you can do a couple of different things. Uh, the primary function here will be to add assignments, of which we have the option to add pre-built assignments, which is going to launch you directly into the uh, McGraw-Hill platforms interface for creating assignments. This is going to look exactly the same as if you were to create an assignment on our platform directly. Um, should look familiar uh, because this is what you would have seen if your district had uh, some content training. Uh, but this is going to let you assign or deploy uh, any resources or assets or assignments that exist in the program. Uh, and there's also lots of filter options in there for you as well. You can also create custom assignments, which allows you to create assignments using the McGraw-Hill tests and assessment banks. This is where you can create your own questions, create assessments using our question banks, or any other type of custom ability you would like to utilize. Both of these will function the exact same, and both the assignments and the scores will automatically sync back into your Canvas gradebook. Uh, also on this screen, I will go over uh, if you have any assignments in the McGraw-Hill platform that have not been synced into Canvas yet, you can sync them manually here using the Sync Assignments button, and we will display any of those assignments in this list below. So we'll go ahead and click on Add Pre-Built Assignments, and as I mentioned, this is just going to load into the interface that already exists in the McGraw-Hill platform. So once again, if your district has used this content before, uh, or you received any uh, professional development training, uh, the screen should hopefully look familiar to you. Uh, another benefit of this is that when you launch into this um, for making assignments, it does always pick up uh, where you left off. Uh, in my case, I believe we're in uh, module one, lesson three, and you can see that it immediately loaded us in here, and it's gonna continue to do that. If you, if you come in here, make an assignment in unit five, Next time you come in, it's going to automatically come back to Unit 5. Um, regardless of that, though, you can always click Browse Course at the top left, choose the lesson and unit that you are looking for resources in. We'll just stick with Lesson 3. And then it will display for you all the different resources within that lesson. From here, you can explore those different resources. Uh, we also have lots of filtering options. Uh, you can filter by um, various settings. There's also resource types. You can filter by standards, um, all kinds of great stuff in there to find the resources that you're looking for. Um, and then once you're ready to make an assignment, uh, you would explore those resources, I'm sorry, expand those resources, and then each individual resource is going to have this assign button under it. Uh, and this assign button is how you make that assignment. Um, this is gonna be different than the deploy button, which we'll talk about a bit later in the video. Uh, but the assign button is going to make that assignment for students so it's going to be a scorable um, activity it's going to pass back to the gradebook it's something the students have to submit etc uh, and now this is going to be for individual resources so you would assign just one and then this window would close uh, however you can also assign multiple items at a time by clicking assign at the very top up here and this opens up a list of all the resources and then simply allows you to go through and check all of the assignments you would like to assign. Um, since we're already here, I will go ahead and assign two. Once you've selected the resources you want to assign, again, whether it's one or multiple, uh, you're going to scroll down to the bottom here and click continue. And this will take you to the screen where you can set uh, the due dates, uh, change any of the point values, uh, and any settings. Uh, if you're making multiple assignments, there will be some common settings at the top that you can quickly change. Uh, and these, once you click apply, that will apply to all of the assignments. And then you can also make um, changes to the assignments individually as well. 
Um, they can all have their own different settings, different point values, etc. Once we click Assign, the system is going to, in the background, start processing all of those assignments. Uh, this window will close automatically. It does take about five to 10 seconds, uh, but it is important that you let it close on its own automatically. Once that closes, uh, as I was mentioning, uh, we are building that assignment in the background, syncing it into Canvas, creating it on the McGraw-Hill side, linking those together, etc. Now, while that, all that stuff's happening in the background, uh, that process does actually take about one to two minutes. So you'll see that although we can immediately see these assignments in Canvas, if we try to launch them uh, during that one to two minute window, we are gonna get this CI2 error message. So it's very important. You always wanna wait that one to two minutes before trying to access that assignment. Uh, and that's gonna be the same for your students too, if you push it out to them. While we're waiting for that, uh, and of course, in order for your students to actually see and access those assignments, uh, you do want to make sure that once you're ready for them to access them, you do publish both the module and the assignments within that module. Uh, so we'll go ahead and publish both of those. And now those are ready for our students to access and see. Now we are going to make a quick cut in the video as we begin to talk about other characteristics of making assignments. Now that we've waited about one to two minutes, we can launch this assignment as the teacher. And when you launch the assignment as the teacher, we have a couple of different options. We can edit the primary assignment, which allows you to edit the assignment dates, points, and other settings that we support. Alternatively, you can view the assignment for each of the secondary sections, which is where you will go to view student submissions, and scores. One thing to note about assignments is if you ever need to edit the assignment, such as editing the dates, points, or other available settings, you must make those changes through the McGraw-Hill version of the assignment. To do this, you would simply launch the assignment as the teacher, as I we went over before. You would click the Edit Primary Assignment button, and you can change the settings from here. Once you save these changes, the next time you sync those assignments, those changes will automatically appear in Canvas. Alternatively, if you attempt to edit the assignment directly in Canvas, such as here, these changes will not apply to the assignment. And the next time you sync the assignment, any changes you make on this screen will be overwritten. The reason this occurs is because as part of the assignment sync and grade passback integration, McGraw-Hill's platform sends information to Canvas, but Canvas does not send information to our platform. So once again, any assignments that you make directly in Canvas will not apply to your assignment, and you must make those changes through the McGraw-Hill view of that assignment. Another thing to note, in order for grades to pass back for your students automatically into the Canvas gradebook, they will need to launch at least one assignment through Canvas directly. We do support that teachers and students access the assignments either through Canvas or the McGraw-Hill platform, whichever is easiest for you and the students. However, in order for those grades to pass back, the student does, at some point in the school year, have to launch at least one assignment through Canvas directly. The last thing to note about assignments is that if you'd like to view the assignment as a student, the student view function that exists within Canvas will not work for viewing the assignments. This is simply because in Canvas, this student view button essentially creates a fake user account that does not exist in the McGraw-Hill platform. So when you attempt to launch these items through the student view, our system cannot find that user and you instead just get an error message. If you need to test launching an assignment as a student, you will need to launch it through an actual student's account. Now that we know how to create assignments, there is an additional function that we support with our assignment sync and grade passback integration, which is the deep linking of assets and resources. 
This allows you to create links for your users to launch these resources directly in Canvas without necessarily making them into gradable assignments. In order to do that, we're going to follow essentially the same steps as creating an assignment. So from here, we'll launch our tool through that three dot menu. We will launch our primary section, and then we'll go back to add pre-built assignments. Once again, this is going to load us in the interface that matches with uh, the platform directly. And unlike making an assignment, this is where we're going to be using this deploy button. Um, again, much like an assignment, though, we can also deploy it. We can either deploy individual resources by clicking the deploy button under each individual resource, or if we click deploy at the very top here, we can check off multiple items to deploy at once. And the purpose of this tool is uh, it basically allows you to put assets and resources uh, directly into your course uh, without it having to be a gradable assignment. Um, a big use for this might be something like, you know, in social studies, like some sort of map you want students to reference, um, maybe formulas or tables, uh, but ultimately just something you want students to be able to use uh, without it necessarily being an assignment. Um, very similar to an assignment, like I said, so we'll click deploy here at the very top. We'll grab a couple of random resources, and then at the bottom, we'll click continue. Now, because this isn't an assignment, it's not going to ask us to create any dates or points or any settings, uh, and this screen will actually close on its own immediately after we click continue. And then at the bottom, you can see that those resources are now available in Canvas. Um, once again, though, just like assignments, you will want to make sure that you are publishing those in order for your students to gain access. Uh, also, unlike assignments, we don't have to wait one to two minutes for anything to uh, kind of sync in the background, and these should be launchable pretty much immediately. And that's it for this training video. Please be sure to also review our PDF instructions, which are linked in the description of this video. And if you have additional questions, help is also available from our support teams.